So I got some three lug stuff laid out so we can kind of talk about um, what the mount is, what a three lug mount is, what it's good for, what it's not good for, and maybe kind of push its limits and test it out a little bit, see what kind of abuse we can put it through. Three lug started, um, it was developed by HK. It wasn't initially even meant to be a silent, uh, silencer mount. It's actually meant to mount a flash hider. I don't have one of their flash hiders. You can see that three lug muzzle geometry is machined into the barrel. But here's an MP5K. Um, and if you actually look at this one, it's got the original three lug geometry on it, but it also is threaded. So this was called a Navy style three lug. And this was intended to be able to take that flash hider with the three lug geometry, as well as have a suppressor threaded onto it. It's also pretty common nowadays to be able to just buy three lug muzzle devices. So here's one Silencer Co. makes, half by 28. So this will go on all of your uh, nine millimeter carbines. Um, then we also make them for, here's a 5 8 by 24 one, also made by us, that can go on like a 300 blackout. And it uses the same, it's a little stylized due to the um, external thread body there, but ultimately, functionally, it's the same as your standard half 28 one. Here's our three lug mount. This is our low profile three lug mount. And then to mount it, let's push it down, push, twist, it's mounted. That's the nice thing about three lug is it's about the quickest, most convenient quick attach mount on the market. But it's pretty much limited to just your pistol calibers. Uh, for some reasons we'll go into and we'll do some testing to kind of show what happens. Here's our 45 cal 3 lug and our 9 millimeter one. This housing is identical, the spring is identical, um, this retainer, the hex end is identical. The only difference between the two is the bore of that piston. You can see the 9 millimeter one's thicker and the 45 one's a little bit um, thinner but with a larger opening. So the primary reason this is only a uh, mount interface you want to use on lower pressure rounds, uh, pistol caliber rounds, is because of the pieces it uses. You have an O-ring internal here that helps the piston stay aligned as well as sealed to keep gas from leaking out. And that O-ring can only handle, you know, so high of a temperature. Uh, with pistol calibers, your sub guns, you pretty much won't ever reach a temperature where you're going to destroy that O-ring. But if you are to put it on a, a center fire rifle or something with a lot higher temperature, higher pressure, We've seen those O-rings burn up, even the high temperature O-rings, uh, the Viton stuff and whatnot. Maybe we'll show you that, uh, just so you know what, exactly what happens. See on our 90 millimeter MP5, three lug mount is functioning as it should. Still got that spring pressure, locks into place nice and tight. 16 inch, 5.56 with the Omega and a hybrid booster housing to accommodate the three lug mount. So same thing. Don't do this at home. Good. Good. Well, I thought we were going to shoot some drills, but then you started shooting so fast, so I just had to keep up. So. <laughs> Round 300, 350. 370, 350-ish, we'll call it that for the 9K. And we are close to 900 on the Omega. So you can tell, center fire rifle, same amount of rounds, much hotter, higher pressure, higher velocity, even with the longer barrel. So definitely a lot more heat uh, shooting the uh, three lug on that versus what it's meant for, like a nine millimeter. Okay, so we've let our rifles cool for a little bit. So now they're not gonna burn my hands. And our MP5, their nine millimeter three lug, works exactly how it did the first time. This is what it's built for. It's what it's designed around. It can handle that all day. And our 5.56 five, on the other hand, which three lug is not intended for, <laughs> you can see right there, like there is no spring tension left. Just that heat going through has annealed the spring and probably destroyed and melted the O-ring. So yeah, that is increased risk of baffle strikes having that lack of stability there. And I pushed it down and I can just, there's, it's completely just not serviceable anymore. So that's why we don't put a three lug on a center fire rifle. Now this little guy, it's just a little thread on coupler. And I mean, I didn't invent this idea. I designed this one, but this is something that's been done before. 
but this little guy just threads in half 28 threads into the 22 can, any 22 can. And then we can just three lug that guy like that. So not currently a product we offer anything, it's just a prototype, but if you want it, write your congressman or just write our customer service department and tell them. Actually, I want to put this in the medium configuration. That'll be way cooler. Oh yeah. That right there is nice. Pretty neat. Oh, and our three lug mounts do come with this nifty little tool. It's got the three pins to interface with the mount on your can itself to put that on and off. Also, it's got that little cutout in the center, which is for putting uh, muzzle devices on. So, got your tool that just grabs the lug of your muzzle devices so you can screw those onto your barrel or take them off. And that cutout works on the 9mm ones as well as the 45 ones. How neat is that? Pretty handy. CMMG 45 Banshee. This is a really cool gun. It looks awesome when it's clean, but one downside to white guns is they get dirty really fast. All right, let's throw a suppressor on here and make it a little quieter. We've got our octane. So fast. That's what I love about it. Too hot. And just that quick, we can switch to another one. There's our APC 45 with it on there. So, three looks pretty awesome, super fast. And if you're thinking what I first thought when I discovered the beauty that is three lug, would be I want to put it on a handgun because it's really fast. Let's see what happens when you try that. Okay. It goes on there really easy, but I bet a lot of people already know what's going to happen, but we'll try. And it's dead. So, as many people might know, if you're shooting a pistol with a tilting barrel suppressed, you need a booster. The problem with 3-lug is it basically takes the place of a booster. So, every time you try to fire, the extra weight of the suppressor is being added to the barrel and it just does not have enough power to try to cycle and throw the slide back um, and fully recoil and load another round with that weight there when there's not a booster to help it manage that. But that could be kind of cool. Um, if your gun's not cycling, it's quieter, so you could have kind of an improvised slide lock, I guess. Maybe I'll put my thumb behind it. You just want to hand cycle it. I guess that could be kind of a fun setup. You might be familiar with our uh, non-NFA Maxim. So this is essentially the same Maxim 9 operating system. It's a delayed blowback, kind of like a one-sided roller delay would be a good way to explain it. Um, and because it has a fixed barrel and its delay mechanism is in fact that one-sided roller delay, we call it a wing delay, your barrel doesn't move. So right now it's got a direct thread Omega 9K on there, which looks pretty awesome. But because it doesn't need a booster, like a Glock or another similar pistol, we could, in fact, three lug this. So here's your standard three lug muzzle device. Here's one I cut down about halfway, just to try. So there we go. Three lugged Maxim 9 non-NFA. Three lug Omega 9K. That's a pretty sweet package. Let's uh, verify and make sure it cycles. Doesn't get any quicker than that. So one sacrifice you make uh, when you run three lug is it's not like a super precision mount. So you would never want to use this on like a long range precision rig. It's got movement, like you're always going to have a little bit of wiggle in order to make sure parts are compatible. You're going to have tolerance stack. You don't want things to get stuck with a tiny amount of fouling. So with that little bit of wiggle and also the fact that you have three lugs, you could basically put this on here in three different places and just 
due to reality, you're gonna have a point of impact shift on each lug. Let me get this gun zeroed in. We'll shoot a group, we'll go to the next lug, shoot a group, next lug, shoot a group. Let's see how much spread we actually get. So we'll call that position one. Put a one on there. And the next one, we'll call position two. And then our last one, you guessed it, position C. Check out our group. Huh, not too bad for open sights, if I do say so myself. Um, so we'll kind of draw a circle around that and we'll call that one. And we'll rotate it and shoot another group. Okay, one position over. Got the two on top now. Looks like we moved a little to the left a little bit and my group opened up a little bit. Don't tell anybody. It's kind of embarrassing. Uh, we'll call that two. One more. Rotate another 120 degrees and lock it into our third and final position. All right, looks like we had some overlap into our first group, but you can see the three new shots there and then the other two are mixed in here somewhere. So you can see there is definitely a point of impact shift. Um, you're gonna get that with three lug. If you want a ultra precision mount, you're going to need to either do direct thread or use a proven quick detach mount like the ASR mount that locks up solid and it has the same repeat to zero every single time. So it just depends on your application. Everything has give and take. And that's three lug. Okay, well, I think that about covers it for three lug. If there's any other questions you have, comment on the video or give our customer service department guys a call. And they'll be happy to answer any questions as well.